third Music Box concert of the academic year. My name is Khalil Jalak. I'm the Student Activities Board Music Box Chair. I would like to introduce today's performers, Galen and his band. Galen is a master flautist. He studied at the Berkeley College of Music and holds a Master's in Performing Arts from Rutgers University. Please help in welcoming them to the stage. Thank you, thank you very much. Ladies and gents, I hope you're doing well today. You know, I'm so glad. I'm so glad it's not minus 35 anymore. And did you know that you can actually feel the difference between minus 35 and four? That's, that's really another, another reality. Thank you so much. Um, during this performance, this, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions, and um, it's going to be a kind of a lecture performance kind of thing. And, uh, and if you know the answer, it's great, because you will convince me that you're a jazz aficionado. Then we can go from there. But before we begin, I'd like to thank my wonderful host, who I have known for uh, years. <laughs> And her name is Miss Sharinda Pillai. Miss Sharinda Pillai. And uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the musicians that will be making the music for you this afternoon, rather this morning going into this afternoon. Please give a big round of applause for Stanton. Kenton on piano. And the name of this one is entitled Wave. Two. Thank you. 
Wow! No. I'll give you his initials to speed things up. Because <laughs> people are going to be yelling about all kinds of stuff. His initials were HH. No, it's not Herbie Hancock. I'm all ready for you. His name was, oh, you're looking it up? I see you with your Android. You are a fast lady, I tell you what. Punching those buttons like crazy. His name was Hampton Hawes. Hampton Hawes, one of the greatest, that's right. Hampton Hawes, one of the greatest pianists of all time. What happened was is that JFK went to go hear him at a club in LA. Hampton Hawes was from Los Angeles. And uh, Hampton enjoyed his, uh, the president enjoyed his playing so much that he found out that he did receive 15 years for uh, a drug conviction. But the uh, president commuted his sentence soon thereafter. And then five or six months later, the president was then assassinated. So it's a very interesting story. <laughs>
body and soul was the name of that one. Okay, have you? No, some of you, no, all of you were too young to remember this, but there was a, uh, a show on TV called Name That Tune. You remember? No, you don't remember that, you're too young. Yeah, we do, I heard you, okay. Okay, that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna play Name That Tune! I'm the only one that's excited about it. I don't to see the problem. Okay, no problem. Okay, now you have to name this tune in three notes. No, and as many notes as I play.
Hoboken, New Jersey. Who's that? Sinatra. You're absolutely right. Please give the lady a big round of applause over here. Frank Sinatra. You know what threw you? You know what threw you? I said he was a great civil rights leader. That's what threw you. You said, uh oh. Mm, no. Not, yes, Frank Sinatra, he was. You know what happened? See, what happened was is that um, Frank Sinatra was invited to John Fitzgerald Kennedy's inauguration back in 1960, right? So he was so excited. He said, oh, great. This gives me the opportunity to bring my best friend from the Rat Pack, Sammy Davis Jr. So uh, the president said, no problem, bring him. But then the president changed his mind and said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Isn't he married to that lady by the name of May Brent? The Jewish lady? And uh, Prince Sinatra said, yes, what's the problem? He said, well, you know, the climate of the country, maybe we should leave her at home. Frank said, you know what? If he can't come, I'm not coming. Frank Sinatra wanted to great. And he was at the front line with the 1963 march in uh, August of 1963. The Great March. You know about that march, right? Frank Sinatra.
um, for the ladies only. This is for the ladies. Tell me this. Marilyn Monroe was her best friend. When she was refused entrance in the Sands Hotel, regardless of the big name that she had, Marilyn Monroe stepped up and said, you know what? If you do not allow her to come in, I'm not coming in either. Who's the lady I'm talking about? You're in the right time period. Wrong lady. Eartha Kitt? You're in the right time period. Wrong, <laughs> wrong lady. Horn. You, know, you know what happened? I'm going to tell you something. Yes. Sarah Vaughn? You're in the right time period. <laughs> wrong lady. I was getting ready to say, you know what happened? It seems like there was, I know this sounds kind of strange, right? But it seems like there was this ship that flew in from somewhere with all of these great musicians. They were all born at the same time, 1925, 1926, all the way up to about 1940. And then they all just left the planet almost at the same time. But who am I talking about here? Ella Fitzgerald. Who said that? Ella you're absolutely right, Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, you looked it up. You no, used the iPhone. No, no. You didn't use the iPhone? No. Good for you. <laughs> no, he's clean. He's clean. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're absolutely right. I, I, I slipped. I, I, I apologize. I slipped. The, thank you. Oh, the lady sure can bust you too, I tell you that much. <laughs> Don't you ask a guy, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. 
This gentleman's saxophone sold for over $500,000 in Sotheby's auction about maybe nine years ago. The reason why it sold so much is because he was such a great, great artist. On it, he played a composition that he wrote called A Love Supreme, A Love Supreme. Who am I talking about? No. Who's that? He was from Hamlet, North Carolina. I know that doesn't make a big difference. Oh, good. I'll give you his initials. J.C. Who? You're absolutely right! You're absolutely right then. Please give them both a big round of applause.
So what was the name of that one? That's why I'm here. The name of that one was Giant Steps. That is a composition that all the musicians have a wee bit of a problem with. A wee bit of a problem. <laughs> and it was written back in 1957, 58, and uh, it's a challenge even for us nowadays. <laughs>
Uh, guys, uh, this is uh, uh, rather odd. This is, this is Kenton. Kenton on camera. Please give Kenton a big round of applause. Flute. He would do alto flute 
Really? At, at gigs, which I love. Well, oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I have one of those, but I'm really you know, But you, you don't use it for a while. Why don't you use it? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, one of the reasons is, is that um, the alto flute is in G, and sometimes I just don't want to do the transposition in my mind, you know. I'm looking at the changes, although it is interesting playing that alto flute with C music. You see, uh, different instruments are in different pitches and different pitches, like the trumpet is in B flat. The alto saxophone is in E flat. The tenor saxophone is in uh, B flat. And the uh, baritone saxophone is in E flat. The trombone is in C. So when people, are, when people are writing for these instruments, they have to do what is commonly called transposition. They have to transpose everything into the key of C. So, uh, or to fit their, their, their instrument in order for all the instruments to sound alike. Sounds confusing, doesn't it? You were looking at me like, don't, please, don't explain it. <coughs> don't, do whatever you need to do. So, any other questions? Any other questions? Well, we're going to. Yes! Yes. What have been your top three favorite gigs? What are my top three favorite gigs? Wow. I can tell you my top three favorite experiences since I've been playing. Once, um, once when I was at uh, Berkeley College of Music, surprisingly, uh, Quincy Jones walks in. Shit, cute. Cute <laughs> walks in and just starts to play the piano, and it is unbelievable. So we're standing around him in a, in a horseshoe, and we're all playing with Quincy Jones. And this was back in 1971. And then the following month or two, Stevie blows through, Stevie Wonder, and he sits down and he plays, and we're all freaking out because, it's, I mean, these guys would just come up and just, you know, visit, impromptu, and it was, a, it was a great time. Once I sat in with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, have you ever heard of them? Yeah, I did. I did. Twice, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, and this band, you've got the, if you have never heard of this band, please go online. Now we have YouTube, and if you remember the name Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. In that band back in 1965, I uh, performed with him, the drummer, Art Blakey, with Wayne Shorter, Freddie Hubbard, Jimmy Merritt, and Cedar Walton, and it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. So, yes. Any other questions? Because our time is growing nigh. Yes. Okay. Well, then that's it. Well, then wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Woo!